A goose. What an interesting animal. Somehow they are quite famous, or perhaps infamous. There's even a game where you can play as a goose. Maybe one of you had been chased by a goose before. But think about it. How much do you actually know about goose? Or do we even know much at all? And so, let me raise the question. What exactly is domestic goose? Goose in general is actually a large group of animals. The true geese are categorized in the genus Anser. The word goose refers to both sexes, mostly for the adults. The young ones are called goslings. There are actually two types of domestic goose. The European goose and the Chinese goose. The European goose was domesticated from the grey leg goose around 7,500 years ago, while the Chinese goose was domesticated from the swan goose around 3,500 years ago. Well, technically the swan goose was domesticated into two different breeds, which are the Chinese goose and the African goose. But the thing is, despite the name, African goose is not African at all. The most distinct character from the African goose is the dewlap, that is, this flap of skin on their throat. So, the European goose is mostly used for their meat, which, if you think about it, is quite funny. What's funny, you might ask? Well, you probably know the story of the goose that laid golden egg, right? That goose is a European goose. We know it's not scientific, but let's just say the golden egg is a rare drop in a video game. Like, let's say 0.001%. Imagine having that drop rate from a goose that doesn't even lay a lot of egg. That would be quite a lot. Um, sorry about the tangent, let's move on. The Chinese goose is mostly a layer. That is, they are domesticated for their eggs. On the contrary, the African goose is actually domesticated for their meat. I mean, just look at them. They look so plump, don't they? Oh, and if you have noticed from the images, there is actually a simple way to differentiate the two groups of domestic goose. Here, I'll help you if you haven't noticed. The Chinese goose has this lump at the base of their beak, while the European goose doesn't. This lump is called a knob. Let's talk about this knob for a bit. This knob is only found in the domesticated one. The wild one doesn't have this knob. So, what's with the knob anyway? What's the purpose? Unfortunately, I don't know. If you know the answer, let me know in the comment. Some says that the geese with bigger knobs have a higher social status in the flock. At least, it's apparent that male geese have bigger knobs than females. During growth, the male and female develop their knob at relatively the same rate but the male overtakes the female because they start developing the knob earlier. This knob is not just a lump of meat. In fact, it doesn't have much meat at all. It's mostly a thickened skin. The bone located in the knob is also protruding. So, the knob consists of mostly bone and skin tissues. There are only a few numbers of goose breeds. Well, relative to the other farm animals, that is. Even though white feathers are the most common image when people think of goose, there are actually various breeds with variety of colors. Some are even arguably nice looking. Some breeds are mostly for ornamental purpose, like the Sebastopol. Some are used as a weeder. By that I mean to eradicate specific weeds, because geese are picky eaters. Alright, so, I actually plan to end the topic here, but, during my research for this video, while I was reading the breed chart from the Livestock Conservancy, I stumbled upon this. And I was like, wait, what? I mean, yes, I know that sometimes geese are very aggressive and annoying, but I didn't think anyone would use them as a guard dog. And so, I delved deeper into it. I found this book called Keeping Geese, Breeds and Management by Chris Aston. 
in the book, there is a section called guard geese. Here, let me read it for you. Geese are watchful and inquisitive birds. They notice new people and unusual behavior and make a good deal of noise about it. Perhaps because of this reputation, and especially as a flock, they can deter people from entering premises. Although this does not apply if the intruders have come to steal the geese. Well, that's quite something, isn't it? The book also suggested to choose the Chinese and African breed to be used as guard geese because they are the noisiest. Apparently, during the Battle of Alia in 387 BC, when the Gauls are infiltrating the capital, it failed because a goose noticed them and alerted the Roman consul. And yes, they even had a temple full of geese and considered them as a sacred animal. Quite funny, isn't it? Imagine losing to goose. They are even used in the modern days where 900 geese were used to patrol an American military installation in West Germany. During the COVID-19 pandemics, China used about 500 geese to guard the border between China and Vietnam to protect against illegal immigration. What a wild world we live in. And so, there you go. What seems to be a simple animal is actually quite complex. These weird creatures led to such amazing and weird stories. It's fascinating how we make use of their aggressive and noisy behavior. Who knows what kind of creative use can we think of for animals in the future? For now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now.